So welcome again. In the last video or lecture, we have discussed about the parasitic capacitance that are present in the MOSFET and also we have seen how to include them in the small signal model. So if you remember, we have seen uh, that in a small signal model with the inclusion of the parasitic capacitance, we have total four capacitance, right? One, two, three and four. Along with that, we have two voltage dependent current source as well as one resistors. So total we have seven components. So imagine you have a big circuit, right? In an analog circuit, generally we have five transistor, 10 transistor, or even more than that. So if we have to do some frequency analysis, right? So all the capacitors and all these components will uh, come into picture. So it becomes a really a complex problem. So to solve this complex problem, we need to take help of some computer program to solve this complex network. So this kind of specific program meant for integrated circuit is called SPICE. So SPICE stands for simulation program with integrated circuit emphasis. So this is a computer program which is specifically built for solving integrated circuit problems or basically the network problems. Different companies have developed SPICE and it is freely available. So we will use one of these freely available SPICE in this discussion initially and towards the end we will use the industry standard Cadence Virtuoso which the industry uses to do the analog design and the design meant there can be sent for you know uh, fabricating the integrated circuits in the fab lab so let's see what are the different spice programs uh, provided by different companies so lt spice is made by the linear technology again it is an open source it is openly available now is this acquired by analog devices and we will be using this particular spice to you know uh, solve our problems now onwards of course, there are other spices like A spice by Synopsis, uh, P spice by Cadence, Multisim by Nestle Instruments. And the functionality of all of them are quite similar. If you are using the same model of the MOSFETs, you are supposed to get similar results. Now, uh, one may ask this question. So if I have a spice software which is going to solve the circuits, why do at all I have to learn the circuit theories? Why it is required to learn the small signal model analysis, etc, etc. So the answer to this question is, we may have an advanced calculator, but having an advanced calculator will not make us an expert mathematician. So SPICE is just a tool to solve the circuit. It is not all in all. So we should have a strong circuit understanding to use the SPICE properly and design an efficient circuits. Imagine I have some, you know, parameter X, which I'm supposed to vary. This is my variable and this is my target output. So for example, these Y can be like the gain of an amplifier and X may be W by L of a MOSFET. So let's assume that this is my target. So this is what is my target specification. This is the gain that I'm supposed to achieve. And the particular value uh, of W by L of the MOSFET is maybe here, right? So this is what I'm supposed to get. Now with my health calculation, this may be my initial result. But with the help of the knowledge of the circuit and based on my hand calculation and using the spice, I can tune the parameter X and I can slowly uh, maybe go to the next point which is closer to the target and I can finally reach to the target something like this Okay, so by using the hand calculation and by having the knowledge of the circuit the circuit theory and At the same time using spice it is possible to reach the target of course This will be more clear as we will go to spice example uh, specific to a certain circuit in the future classes. But if we don't know the theory and 
even uh, this may be our starting point or maybe this may be our starting point but if we don't know the theory we may be just jumping around okay we may not be reaching here we may be maybe coming back here something like this so we may be just jumping around and we may not be reaching to the uh, target solution so you know we may be just randomly varying the different w by l parameters and we will see that you know we are not conversing or we are not going towards the actual uh, solution so this kind of behavior is sometimes termed as monkey spice so where we are just trying to uh, vary the parameters and trying to see whether we are achieving the target or not without having much theoretical knowledge hand calculation is also used for for budgeting so let me uh, explain you what is budgeting suppose you have been asked to buy four items from the market one kg each potato tomato capsicum and almonds okay so now you have to take some money right cash money to buy these items but you don't know the uh, price of these items right because the price varies every day in the market but because of your previous knowledge you have some understanding about the prices okay so uh, maybe you know we know that the, the potatoes i know that this potato will never be more than 50 rupees tomato i know that it will never be more than maybe 100 rupees capsicum will never be more than 200 rupees and almonds it will be at max 1000 rupees so this is what the information that i have so i will take uh, an amount of if i add all this money i will get something like rupees so rupees 1350 rupees so maybe i'll take 1400 to be on safe side and i'll go to the market and i'll purchase all these things now when i go to the market the prices may be something like potato maybe you know maybe 35 rupees only and tomato may be just 95 and the capsicum may be just you know capsicum may be like same as whatever you have estimated and almonds may be just 950 rupees so if you totally calculate all this amount you will get rupees so finally you have purchased one kilo each of these items okay and you have paid a price of 1280 rupees and this is because you have taken 1400 you have estimated that the price will be uh, in this range so you have estimated that so this is the, the 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 estimated that you have done is basically the hand calculation based on your theoretical knowledge and the values that you have got is basically um, from spice right spice will give you the exact value so this was your estimated value based on your hand calculation and uh, this is the value that you have got from the spice so imagine you don't know you don't know the market price you don't know how to estimate these values suppose for almonds you know for one kg price if you have thought it same as the capsicum right 200 rupees you will never be able to purchase this because you will be taking maybe around only you know uh, 200 plus 200 100 plus 150 450 rupees so maybe you may be taking just only 500 rupees so if you have taken only 500 rupees you would not have been able to purchase the uh, all these vegetables which is costing you around 1280 rupees so the conclusion is that hand calculation can help you to do the budgeting before we actually design the circuit in spice so <clears throat> there are three main types of analysis in spice one is the DC operating point analysis, the other is the AC analysis and transient analysis. So there are other more kind of analysis but these are but they are generally the subset of these three main type of analysis. So let's go one by one to each of these analysis. So what is a DC operating point analysis? So imagine I have two resistors, it's of 1 kilo ohm, 1 kilo ohm. We know that if a 2 volt is applied, so this the voltage will be divided equally and it will be 1 volt here. So this is very simple, but imagine I have a complex circuit and I want to know the DC point, basically the steady state voltage, then I have to go for the DC operating point analysis in SPICE. 
So like things becomes complicated when we introduce the MOSFET, right? So depending upon this MOS model, I will have a particular voltage, DC voltage here, right? And of course, depending upon what is the, you know, voltage that I applied, suppose I have applied 0 0.9 volt, uh, I need to find out exactly what is the voltage here. Yeah, so this is the DC operating point analysis. So the next type of analysis is the SA analysis. So SC analysis is useful especially when we want to know the transfer characteristics with respect to frequency. For example, if I have this simple RC circuit and if I am using it as a filter, I would like to know the bandwidth. Of course, we know the bandwidth is 1 by 2 pi RC. Okay. So what we do in lab is generally we try to plot the frequency response. So we know that for RC circuit, it is something like this. So this is my... Uh, frequency versus the magnitude or basically the V out by V in in dV and of course this is my phase response okay so what I am doing here is I am sweeping the frequency and I am trying to find out the ratio of the V out by V in so this kind of analysis is done in the SC analysis basically the parameter that we are sweeping is the frequency and the output or the resultant that we are getting is the uh, magnitude of a particular voltage or maybe the ratio okay uh, of current as well as voltage and magnitude and as well as the phase so this is the AC analysis so the third type of analysis is the transient analysis in transient analysis basically we are trying to see the real-time signal with respect to the time so what it means is my variable is time right with varying time how my voltage or current is varying right this is this is maybe the waveform of the v in right this is the uh, uh, small signal or the pulse right this is varying with time this voltage and i want to know how the output voltage is varying okay so of course this will have both the small signal as well as the um, dc right so the small signal will be riding over this dc Similarly, at the V out, there will be some DC and the small signal will be riding over this DC. This will be more clear as we'll go to the actual LT spice example. Okay, this is a transient analysis. Let's just conclude the different types of analysis. So DC operating point analysis is the steady state uh, where we are trying to find out the steady state voltage, right? Steady state, all the DC voltages or currents in the steady state condition. SE analysis basically we are varying the frequency and uh, we are trying to see the current as well as the voltage waveform so basically it is the frequency versus voltage or current frequency versus voltage or current or the ratio of voltage or ratio of current okay so this is the SE analysis transient analysis is basically we are changing the time right we uh, time versus voltage or current okay so uh, this will be more clear as we go ahead and see the lt spice example okay so now before going to lt spice let's see the mosfet model for spice so this is the format by which the uh, mosfet model is fed to the spice so this is a level one spice model. Of course, nowadays there are advanced model, right? There are much higher level model. But before going to those model, we will try to be comfortable with this level one model. And uh, in future, we will be introducing the advanced level. But if you are comfortable using this level one model, understanding the higher level models becomes very easy. So this is are the different syntax that are used to. Uh, feed to the spice right simulator and uh, if we use this format spice will understand that the parameter of a certain variable so let's try to understand what are these uh, variables both in the nmos model as well as in the pmos model so let's start with the first one vt0 vt0 stands for the threshold voltage threshold voltage where there is no a body effect and it is its unit is in voltage so this is like uh, 0 0.7 volt is the threshold voltage of this particular 
MOSFET model. Not that this model is just an example which I have taken from the book by Razavi. If you are going to different technology nodes, this value will vary. <coughs> Gamma is the body effect, body effect and its unit is uh, square root of the voltage and the value is 0 0.45. So if you remember, this is the gamma which this is representing. Okay, So depending upon this and depending upon the uh, source to bulk potential, we know that the threshold voltage will vary. So this is the gamma which is 0 0.45 in that particular model of the MOSFET. Next is the phi. Okay, uh, Phi is basically the 2f value and the phi is if you remember it is this one, this parameter. Okay, So 2 phi f. So its unit is also voltage V. The next parameter is the T ox. T ox is basically the gate oxide thickness and it is its unit is meters. So basically T ox is the gate oxide thickness. This is the oxide thickness. So this is the T ox, right? So the oxide thickness. N sub is the doping concentration of the substrate and its unit is per cubic centimeter. It's basically the doping concentration of the P substrate is basically the doping concentration of the P substrate on which the MOS is made. And the next one is the LD is the source or drain site diffusion and its unit is meter. Okay, and let me show you these two parameters in the diagram. So N sub is the doping concentration of the substrate. Okay, so N sub. And <coughs> the LD is this diffusion area the diffusion of the source and the drain. Mu zero is the channel mobility or basically the mu, mu n, okay. Lambda is the uh, channel length modulation or this basically the lambda one, right. And its unit is voltage inverse. So this is the mu n and the, this is the lambda, okay. So these are these two parameters. Okay, so next Cj is the source or drain bottom plate uh, junction capacitance per unit area. This is the one which we had discussed in the last class. So basically this Cj is this parameter, right? Here I have shown it as farad per centimeter square, but there it is expressed as farad per uh, meter square. And Cjsw is the side wall, you know, source drain side wall junction capacitance per unit length, right? Again this farad per meter. So basically this parameter Cjsw as discussed in the last lecture. So uh, PB is the source or drain junction built in potential. This is the one which is the PB. Okay, so P for pi and B is B. MJ is the exponent in the CJ volt equation. And uh, MJSW is the exponent in the um, CJSW equation. Both of them are unitless. So let me show this one in the equation again. So this is the MZ that we are talking about and this is the, this N is the MZ as W. So this is for the side wall and this is for the bottom plate. And both of them are unitless of course because these are exponent. So CZDO is the overlap capacitance, basically the CV, COV on the drain side, okay. Uh, get and drain overlap capacitance, basically this one the COB capacitance, capacitance per unit length for this one and CZSO is the same COV but towards the source. This one, this other COV. And the last is ZS, basically is the reverse saturation current for the source drain, you know, uh, area. So, uh, and this is uh, ampere per meter square. So, what is this? We know that there is a, this PN junction, so this is P substrate and this N substrate and you know there it is always in reverse bias. So the leakage current, right, from here to here, right, the reverse saturation current is this JS. Okay, with this we have a covered a description of all these parameters, okay. So let me demonstrate to you now whatever we have discussed, the different type of analysis in the LT bias. So this is my LT spice in the Windows platform. So to start, you can go and make a new schematic. Okay. 
so this is the toolbar where you have the access you know to all the different components and of course different commands so let's start with the resistive divider and try to do the DC operating point analysis so you can go here and get the resistor so you can see here the resistor is attached to the cursor and by just clicking I can uh, you know place the component resistor here and I need to place one more resistor okay two resistors are placed you can see that still the resistor is attached to the cursor of the mouse so you can get rid of this attachment by pressing the escape key now we need a ground here so you can get a ground from here uh, I need a voltage source so you can go here so you can get all the components here so if you see here we, there are different components right you can get the MOSFET you can get the VZTs diodes and even the resistors from here uh, inductors all this um, here so and you can see here there is a voltage source okay so just click OK and place it here okay so now <coughs> the um, uh, I need to connect one more ground here so you can press the ground here I can press escape key now I need to do the connection so this is the where command by which I can connect all the nodes so go here and just click and click here click and click here click click here done okay so the next thing that I need to do is I need to uh, give the component values so if I just right click this component so and I want to give a supply voltage of 2 volt so here you don't have to write the volt the here it already is specifying that whatever the value that I enter in this text box it's in volt I don't want a series resistance I can make it 0 or leave it blank by default it's 0 okay um, so here um, I want to add a resistance of 1 kilo ohm 1 kilo ohm I will not be entering anything in this text box and here also I can make it 1 kilo note that in LT spice or in spice uh, it is case insensitive so whether you write capital K or small k it's the same thing it's kilo ohms okay so now I need to add an analysis command because I want to do the uh, DC operating point analysis to do that you can go here and uh, this is the spice directive so you can open here and just right click help me edit analysis command and you can go here and click the DC operating point analysis okay so you can see here there are different types of analysis transient analysis assay analysis we will see in the later part of this video of course the DC sweep and DC transfer and noise are there which is a subset of these main tree analysis so yeah so now it's ready so I can just save it and I can run the simulation so once I run the simulation you can see here that the uh, this window has pop up so it is telling that the node n002 is at 1 volt n001 is at 2 volt but we don't know what is this node so we need to label the nets so to do that you can level the nets by using this one level net so let's level it as VDD and let's level this as press escape again level it as V out now again save it and run the simulation so yes you can see here even though I have given it as uh, capital letter for V out and VDD but it is printing here as small letters so 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 it means that the LT spice is case insensitive so V out is 1 volt so this node voltage is at 1 volt and VDD is at 2 volt and the current flowing through R2 is uh, 0 0.001 ampere which is 1 milliampere 
and the current flowing through R1 is also 1 milliampere. The current flowing out of this V1 is minus 1 milliampere. The minus indicates the direction, so it is flowing out of this voltage source. That's why it's minus. If it is going inside the voltage source, it would have been plus. So now let's do the DC operating point analysis using a MOSFET. So let's get my uh, MOSFET here. So again, go to this component and you see if you see the NMOS. So there are two types of MOSFET, NMOS and NMOS4. So we will be using NMOS4. The difference between these two is in case of the NMOS, the source and the bulk are always connected but whereas in NMOS4 the source and bulk are not connected. Uh, so this is especially uh, required because when you are having multiple NMOS the bulk will be connected to the lowest potential. It will not the bulk will not be always sorted to the ground. This will be more clear as we go ahead and do some examples in future videos. So it's a good practice to use NMOS4. So again, place it. I want to zoom out a little bit so you can use this, you know, button to zoom out. Okay, and you can click and drag the screen to drag the, you know, schematic viewer. And you can just click this resistor, put it here. Now I need a ground here. And I need a voltage source. So just type B O L T A G E voltage one for the supply voltage and other is for providing the gate voltage. So again, put a ground and do the necessary connection. So one thing is that you can, uh, if you want to connect from here to here directly, you can just type like this. You can just go through this voltage source. Also, the LD spice will understand that uh, you know we need to jump you know or you just need to make the connection from here to here and here to here it will skip the voltage source part you can connect here and here also you can do this connection directly so even though we are going through this device it's not sorting it the LD space understands it Again, I'll be connecting this bulk to the source in this case. So bulk is always connected to the lowest potential. If multiple uh, transistors are stacked, so in that case, the bulk also will be connected to the ground itself, which is the lowest potential. Okay, so now let's edit the values. So this, I'll make it as 0 0.9 volt. The resistor, I'll make it 3 kilo ohms. The supply I'll make it as 2 volt. Yeah, so and of course let's name the net. This I will name it as V in. This is VDD. And this node as V out. Okay, so now we need to edit this MOSFET. So if I right click here, you can see that um, there's an option to put L and W. So let's keep L as maybe 0 0.5 micron and W maybe 20 micron. There is an option to edit these parameters, but in actual situation, the foundry will not allow us to edit this. A designer will have access only to L and W, okay? So click OK. And now it's time that we use a MOS model, the model that we have described before, the level one model. So to do that, I have the, you know, this uh, text file, which I will be sharing with you, as well as I will be copy pasting this text file in the description of this video. So to get this MOS file or to include this MOS file in the simulation, just copy this one and again go to this uh, SPICE directive and just paste it 
okay and this will be pasted here so this is pasted in my uh, this schematic what the tool will do is during the simulation it will call this uh, MOS model if you see here the name of this model is NMOS and if you see in this text the model name is NMOS so during the simulation this um, spice engine LD spice engine will use this model to characterize or to do the simulation with this transistor so okay let's do the operating point analysis so again you can just type dot op or you can use the previous method of uh, going right click and going this way so both of are the same thing both are fine so yeah let's just run the simulation again <clears throat> and you can see the uh, operating points right so you can see here that the um, v out is 1.45 volt this is the dc voltage v in is 0 0.9 vdd is of course 2 volt and the current flowing through m1 the id is uh, 0.18 milliampere so this is how we do the dc analysis of a mosfet now let's uh, do transient and assay analysis of the same circuit we can close this one again you can you can delete this one now now what i will do is i will apply a sine wave here of maybe 10 millivolt over this 0 0.9 volt and i will see what is the output so you can right click here but you can see here this has only um, option to enter the dc voltage so you have to click this advanced option okay and this is the sine wave okay you can generate different kinds of waves like pulse sine exponential currently we'll be generating a sine wave so you can just uh, dc offset will make it 0 0.9 so this is the dc value uh, this is the dc value over which my uh, small signal of maybe 10 millivolt will be writing over we'll see the waveform we can see and verify this one let's the frequency be maybe 100 kilohertz 100k again again whether this is big m or small m it doesn't matter so yeah so m means milli okay okay now i need to go for transient analysis so go to this op uh, and again this is the spice directive so if you if you hover your mouse you can see here this is called the spice directive if you want to know any commands you can just hover the mouse and this will give the option like this is for zooming in this is for zooming out okay and this is for deleting cutting okay this is for where's this is for ground where ground and this is for leveling the net this is for capacitor this is for inductor okay so again go to the spice directive right click it help me edit analysis command we'll go for transient analysis so let's go for a duration of 0 0.1 milli uh, you you have an option of giving the maximum step size but i will let the tool decide we'll keep it default just click ok now we are ready to run the simulation so you can just save it and run so you can see here there are now two windows one is the waveform viewer and this is the schematic window so now if i just hover now my mouse cursor and just bring it near the any of this net so if i now hover around my mouse and bring to any of its net it will change its uh, shape right it is just showing as like a prop you know so if i just click here it will show this the waveform the voltage waveform and if i just change here and if it is so something like this that means it will be plotting the current which i will not do now so you can see here that if you see the v in there is a 10 millivolt small signal which is riding over this 900 millivolt so this is the dc level okay and if i just click here the v out it will be plotting the output voltage and it is riding over 1.45 the DC that we have seen in the operating point analysis. To exactly know this value, you can use uh, cursor. So you can just uh, 
of course before that I'll just delete the input waveform so let's just analyze the output waveform to delete that you can select this one and delete the VIN yeah and to see the uh, you know the DC voltage you can just click here then the cursor will come so you can see here the mid value is around so this uh, window also will come so the mid value is around you know uh, 1.45 if it's the same as whatever we have done in the DC simulation okay and if I want to know the peak to peak voltage especially for GAN calculation I can put a cursor here so this is cursor number one so I can get cursor number two just by clicking once more here so this number two is has come so so the cursor number two has come and I can drag and put it down here so here uh, the difference is shown the cursor 2 minus cursor 1 so the uh, magnitude the difference is around 100 101 millivolt okay so this is how we can find out the gain so in this case the peak to peak amplitude of the signal or the input signal is 20 millivolt because my amplitude is 10 millivolt and the peak to peak of this output is you know 100 and one so the gain is almost five so this is a common source amplifier basically which we'll be discussing more in the future lectures so yeah so now we have done the transient analysis and we have seen the waveforms now let's go and do AC analysis so we will do the AC analysis so for that just delete this transient analysis and the thing that we need to do is we need to slightly modify this voltage source of course we don't have to modify you just need to add so this is used for transient analysis but for AC analysis or which is basically a small signal analysis I can add maybe 100 milli uh, AC amplitude okay and um, of course AC phase you can make it zero if you want to have some initial phase you can keep some value here but we want to make it zero and click OK okay so this will be used for AC analysis this is used for the transient analysis of course the 0.9 volt uh, this will also be there in the AC analysis okay but whereas this amplitude and this frequency will not be used in the AC analysis because it's a, because in AC analysis we are sweeping the frequency okay so now go to the spice directive again right click help me edit analysis command and go to the AC analysis so here I need to mention the start frequency which may be 1 Hertz and the stopping frequency may be 10 gigahertz so I'll be using this uh, decade option to select the type of sweep or basically the type of like the sweeping the frequency and per decade I will be you know um, adding 100 points so the more number of points we add per decade the more precise will be the simulation but 100 is generally okay if we increase this number further the simulation may slow down especially for bigger circuit so click ok and that's it our AC analysis is ready so let's save it and run the simulation yeah again the waveform has come up here so you can see here the x-axis is the frequency the frequency is swept from 1 Hertz to 10 gigahertz so um, to plot the transfer function you can just uh, click here and address and V out Y V in I want to uh, plot the gain transfer function and press OK so here here you can see two lines one is bold line one is the dotted line the bold line is the gain and the dotted line is the phase okay again here also you can bring the cursor by clicking here okay so you can see that gain is 14.29 uh, dv okay and you can move around this cursor and maybe you can find out the cutoff frequency so because the gain is 14.29 so the bandwidth will be at around 11.29 or yeah so it's around this is the bandwidth around 
9 gigahertz is the bandwidth okay so yeah so this is how uh, you do the assay analysis okay so okay so in this video we have learned about the spice and also we have seen how to use LT spice to do DC operating point analysis transient analysis and assay analysis so in the next video we will learn the common source amplifier and of course the different types of amplifiers and simultaneously we'll see how to use LT spice to design those kind of amplifiers so thank you we'll meet again in the next lecture